I'm, uh, I'm John Coles. Uh, we're, and, and that's where I always feel my partner, and my other partner is John Burke. We're from the firm of uh, Coles, Burke, and Bustillo, uh, with our offices in Harvard in Jersey City. Uh, this is Alira, Alira Liriano, who uh, is our assistant and wants to be a law school student next year. Uh, wants to join you all. Um, Bob Margulies, I, I, my understanding was explaining to you that he couldn't be here today. He asked me to come and speak to you as somebody who um, negotiates cases for a living, as do my two partners. Um, um, my partner Raul is uh, a former Hudson County prosecutor, so he did criminal defense work for Hudson County for seven years, and, and has been we've been together now for ten years now. In 2002, yeah. Ten years. John and I have been together what, 15 years now, or something uh, like that. Yes. Something like that. Okay. Well, we'll see if we can get some uh, prop that thing up so we get it up on the screen. Um, I am uh, a past president of the New Jersey Association for Justice, uh, which um, is, for, for, for lack of a better term, the plaintiff's trial. Um, so for those of you who, uh, who are interested in doing plaintiff's work rather than defense work, you should consider um, becoming members of the New Jersey Association for Justice, which is having, coincidentally, a meet and greet uh, Thursday at 530 in this law school. So if any of you, and I'm not telling you you should or shouldn't, but if you're interested in doing plaintiff's work, that would be a good place to start. Membership is free for law school students. Attending all of the, the, uh, the uh, seminars, the educa legal education for students is free. That would normally be four or five hundred dollars a pop. So if there's some benefits, I will not only mediations, but also negotiating all kinds of cases from a plaintiff's perspective. I would say 90% of the work that we do for plaintiffs is on a contingency basis. So my perspective is on all negotiations. At the end of this case, I want to be able to hand my client a check for some money, pay my firm expenses, and make some money myself. That's how we stay in business, no matter how good you are or you may become as an attorney by going to law school and then becoming a practicing attorney. None of it makes a difference unless you and your firm can stay in business. You do that if you're a plaintiff by making more money than you spend on preparing a case. The number one skill that any plaintiff's firm has to develop is case evaluation, initial case evaluation. You need to know which cases to take and which cases not. If you're a defense attorney, on the other hand, you get paid regardless. So it really doesn't matter. You're going to charge the client or the insurance carrier, whoever, on an hourly basis or on whatever fee basis you make. But you make money on every file. So you don't have to worry about necessary case evaluation. In fact, um, to the contrary, often defense attorneys are saddled with cases that are nearly, if not completely, indefensible and still they, uh, they defend them because they get paid on an hourly basis. Whereas, from, an attorney, from a plaintiff's attorney standpoint, um, I'm looking for the, I hear this. 
Uh, I'm looking for um, fundamentally in negotiation or in case selection, it's the same value that you're looking for. If I were to present this case to a jury or a bench trial to a judge, could I win? You know, what are the facts of this case that would that if I presented to a room full of eight normal people, at the end of it they would shake their head and say, yeah, you know. This is a case where the, the claimant, the claimant deserves to be compensated. My partner, John Burke, uh, when he speaks, is going to address, uh, by the way, it's John Burke's birthday today. Happy birthday. No song necessary. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to John Burke. Wonderful to spend it with you. Uh, <laughs> uh, John is going to handle um, what it's like to negotiate before suit and the tactics, the, the, the skills that you need to do. Um, you here at law school have decided to invest your time and your money and your skills in uh, becoming practicing attorneys, whether it's for the government or the private practice. But, but you've invested three years of your life, at least three years of your lives, and your hard-earned money and your time into this profession. And, you may look back at the end of three years and you may say, well, that was a great idea. Some of you may not think that. I, I know that there are people who um, get out of the practice of law for a couple of years. But, but the fact of the matter is you've made this investment. And you're entitled at the end of this investment to get some return on your investment. And negotiating skills are essential to allowing you to get a return on your investment. Well, what do I mean by that? The more efficiently and effectively you negotiate, the higher value your cases are going to have, and the more money your firms are going to make. Um, ultimately, when you're working at a court claims firm, one of the measures of success is what cases did the guy bring in, how much money did we make of them. That's in, in the crudest sense, that's what we do. Because if we don't make money, we go out of business, we can't help anybody, we can't use our skills, you've wasted three years of your life. I am, by the way, a graduate of Rutgers Law School class of 1981. I think I'm going to look for my picture. See if they had pictures of it, don't they? Right? Where did they hang? Right? Let's take a look. Let's see if I recognize myself. Uh, I would say that being, being an attorney is, um, is a rewarding profession, uh, aside from making money. Um, what it forced me to do as, a, as, a, as an attorney was to more appreciate the people around me on a daily basis because you come out of school, I went right from college to law school, maybe some of you did also. You're sort of insulated in that, law, in that school world, the law school world. You don't really have that much interaction with real life, with the world outside. And, and when you become a lawyer and you're doing the cases, civil litigation, you're going to deal with all people from all walks of life, the jury comes from all walks of life, the court staff with whom you have to deal come from all walks of life, the adjusters that you deal with. So you really have to learn to appreciate people from all walks of life in order to do civil litigation, particularly from a plaintiff's end. Um, when I talk about that too, um, there was something I wanted to show you all. Come on, Here. Come on, the other it's right here, John. Where is it? Behind oh, the yeah, book. sure. Two books I would recommend to you um, in terms of appreciating others and how to deal with others on a day-to-day -day basis. It's going to seem kind of silly, but I really strongly recommend that you read these two books. This book, you probably have heard about it your entire life. It's the Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. You can buy it on Amazon.com for probably a buck as a used copy. It is the best book of its kind that I have ever read. It is a guide on how to deal with people in negotiations and at trials. Another book by the Dale Carnegie people, Five Essential People Skills, How to Assert Yourself, Listen to Others, and Resolve Conflicts. Cheap investment will, will change your life. And by that I mean, the more efficiently and effectively you, ne you negotiate a case, the quicker you will. Yes. Sure, absolutely. If anybody really likes me, you can keep my copy. 
Um, every one of you, you know, regardless of what your personality is, regardless of what kind of skills you have, regardless of what your history is, you have the ability to become an effective, efficient negotiator. It's a skill like any other skill. Some people are going to have more innate skills, have some better people skills than others. But these traits, these, these um, skills are learned like anything else. And you practice them, and you get better at them. Um, why do you negotiate cases? I don't know if you, you all have very much knowledge of how the court system really works. You probably don't. I know when I was in law school, I had no idea how the court system worked. 98 to 99% of all civil cases are settled. That means all of these trial courses that you take here in law school, one to two percent of your cases actually try to verdict. In fact, the cases that try to verdict are cases that something has gone wrong in. In, in. in our line of work, if you have selected the case correctly, if you've worked it up properly, gotten the right experts, the right deposition testimony, had the case in the correct posture, you will settle that case and you will settle it for good money. That's just the way the system works. If, if you haven't done something right as a plaintiff's attorney, wrong case, client didn't tell me everything, didn't know an important fact, missed something, um, misunderstood the law, uh, occasionally there's a monkey wrench like the judge didn't understand the law. Uh, those are the cases that you end up trying to verb. Uh, and they're tough cases to win because usually the insurance company and the defense attorneys have a pretty good grasp on what's going on. I mean, they see every wrinkle under the sun. So you're trying the really tough ones. And if you go to courthouses and you look at the verdicts on civil cases, the, the majority of the civil verdicts are in favor of the defendant, in favor of the insurance company. And that's because the insurance company's defense attorneys settle the good cases before they go to trial. So we end up, I mean, I end up spending, I don't know, New York, the requirement is 24 CLE credits after two years, New Jersey's 22. But you, we spend 11 hours, even as a practicing attorney, we are required to take continuing legal education courses for the rest of our professional careers. And I take all these courses on how to try cases, and theories on reptile brain, and, you know, crazy. And why do we do it? Because one or two percent of the cases are going to try. Those are going to be the tough ones, and you better be prepared to try that case. But 98 percent of cases can settle. So you all need to learn how to settle cases, how to negotiate good settlements, probably even more so than, than practicing your trial skills, which, of course, you need to have, but don't really come into play, but every once in a while when something's gone wrong. So why, how do we go about negotiating? Part of our job is to, is to evaluate the facts of the case, figure out what the risks are, and then essentially what I refer to as arbitrage risks. Advise the client, hey, there's a, there's a small chance, good chance, very good chance that if we try this case to verdict, we're going to lose. And this is why. You have this problem, you have this problem, you have this problem. I always tell my partners, you can, get, you, can, you can argue with the jury and get the jury to buy one of your arguments. But if you have two problems with your case, it's too much to ask a jury to accept your argument on two different issues. As a defense attorney, it's just driving a defense case, and I have tried defense cases, is much easier. Because what you need to do to win a defense case is poke one good hole in the plaintiff's case. Liability, damages, proximate cause, anything. One good hole. Because it's plaintiff's burden to prove liability, proximate cause, damages, all of those issues. So you have to line up, you got to hit a home run every time. You got to line them up all right and knock it out of the park every time. With a defense attorney, you just hit singles. You hit singles, it's a hole in the plaintiff's case, you win. So you, you, know, you really have to, to understand your case, where the holes are, and you need to explain to your client right from the outside, hey, this, you know, we got this going for us, this is good, this is good. This is a problem area. That's going to affect the value of your case. Even though your value of your case might be X, we're going to take two-thirds of X or half of X because if we were to try this case, you've got a 50% chance of losing it on the jury. That's what the defense attorney does also. The case comes into a defense attorney's office. He sits down. He looks at it. 
and he's evaluating to the insurance company or to his client. Look, we've got these problems. These are, these are plaintiff's good, strong points in this case. But we may have this problem. You know, we may have this going for us. We may have that going for us. So they're arbitraging the risk also. Sometimes a bad settlement is better than, than a good trial in the sense that you have to look at what, what's at risk if it's a smaller case with a value that's kind of limited, which we all take you know, from time to time in sort of bread and butter cases. Um, but the cost to get the good result is more than the value of the case. So those are the cases that we take with the hope that we can settle, uh, uh, we can negotiate a settlement right up front and not spend a lot of time and money and effort. 